Doctor, can you talk about the impact of regenerative medicine and, and what would that have on longevity? What are we talking about in the big picture, not only on length of years, but on quality of life as well? Sure. We do not know at this point how long people will live when they receive the therapies that we're working on at the moment and that mm -hmm. I think we have a good chance of developing within the next couple of decades. What we do know, however, is that any longevity benefits that might accrue from these therapies will be a side effect of health. We absolutely will not be developing therapies that keep people alive for an unusually long time in a fra frail state of health, in a diseased state of health that's like being old today is. Mm -hmm. It's only going to happen if and when we can restore people to a truly youthful state, not only how they look, but also how they feel and how they function. That means that we absolutely do not need to consider the possibility of this being a, an uninteresting, uh, unattractive concept because people will be frail. Life expect expectancy has increased over the last 100 years by as much as 15, 20 years, I suppose. How close are we to seeing a bigger jump, do you think, in life expectancy? The thing about life expectancy as we look at it historically and indeed project into the future is we can't just look at trends simplistically. What we have to do is look at the underlying reasons why life expectancy has increased at various stages during history. And as you say, there have been absolutely, well, hardly any increase in average lifespan until maybe 200 years ago, mm -hmm. at which point things started to take off. And in particular, between about, let's say, 1850 and 1950, there was pretty much a doubling of the average time that people would be expecting to live. That happened essentially because in the Western world, we were able to bring infectious diseases under a very large degree of control and thereby to reduce the number of people who would die in the first year of their life from perhaps 40% down to you know, a, small, a very small percentage. Mm -hmm. um, so of course that means that these people are going to live a lot longer and that's going to rise, raise the, um, the total life expectancy. Um, but we can't do that again, it's done, right? We can't get any more significant increase in longevity by, increasing, by decreasing infant mortality or indeed mortality in childbirth, it's been done. Mm -hmm. What we can do is reduce the risk of death at ages at which people tend to die now, which of course means 60, 70, 80, 90. And that's what's been happening since 1950. The reason why longevity, life expectancy has been carrying on going up is because we have had success in reducing the incidence of the life-threatening diseases and disabilities of old age. But here's the bad news. The way we've done that appears to be not really mainly through medicine. Some, there have been some medical advances, especially in cardiovascular disease, that have made some difference. Mm -hmm. But by and large, it seems that what's happened is early life effects, what are often called cohort effects, where people are somehow um, younger, through, biologically younger throughout their lives than they used to be. Even prenatal nutrition seems to be a really big feature in this. And of course, you know, prenatal nutrition for people who are 70 now is a lot better than people, for people who were 70, mm -hmm. 50 years ago. So, you know, this allows people to stay healthier for longer and therefore, as a side effect, as I said, to stay alive for longer. Mm -hmm. But that, too, is reaching diminishing returns now. You know, people who are 30 today probably had pretty much the same quality of prenatal nutrition and other things as people who are 70 today. So we may be reaching a point where that is also going to... Uh, in the Western world, of course, is going to feed its way out of the system. And the rate of increase in longevity may very well level off over the next 10 or 20 years, I would predict. The question then is what's going to happen after that? And after that, of course, we're looking at the possibility of the therapies that Sense Research Foundation works on and other people, um, regenerative medicine for the diseases and disabilities of old age. Once that gets into place, we can strongly expect to see a real takeoff. But as I say, that will be a side effect of health. Mm -hmm. You've said that there you think there's a good chance there's a person alive today that might live to be a thousand. I think it's possible that we could see really extraordinary lifespans. We could even see people living as long as a thousand years. But obviously we won't see that for another 900 years. So it's really not <laughs> a useful thing to be speculating about. Mm -hmm. How can... Uh, it's people, that's hard for people to grasp, I think, when, when you talk about the life expectancy now. It is hard for people to grasp, and that's why I say, listen, just don't be distracted by it. It is just a <laughs> distraction. What matters is staying healthy now, staying healthy in 20 or 30 or 40 years. Forget about how long you're going to live. It's not, it's not relevant.